Hi there, welcome back to the Dukes. My name's Aidan Robbins Jones. Thank you very much for tuning in and to all you guys that kind of been following us over the last few lessons. Uh, we've really been talking over the last 10 sessions on uh, setup, posture, position, grip. This is a real refresher's course today because I'm sure I've given you an awful lot of information just to work on and hopefully it's been really successful for you. Um, to kind of go through step by step here, we've, we've first of all talked about the left hand position as far as the grip is concerned. Hopefully you're probably saying this at the same time as I'm talking to you now. Left hand checkpoint, three things you need to make sure you remember. Two knuckles you be out, should be able to visually see from your normal setup position. Thumb should be just running down the right side of the handle, so you see how it's just on the right side of you know, the actual name on the grip here. And also giving yourself about half an inch at the top of the grip there. Okay? After the, last, the first lesson, hopefully if you've worked on that, that should feel pretty solid from there. And it's nicely into the fingers and I'm well in control. Second thing we really talked about was grip pressure. We kind of highlighted a little training way of doing it. Holding the club straight directly up into the air, nice and loose in the hands. Drop it to a 45 degree angle. The, the, the fingers will naturally start to grip the club tighter. It will probably feel quite light to you, but that's really where we start to get our feel and control. Remember that the grip pressure is the last three fingers in the left hand and the middle two fingers in the right hand. Working on from there, we really started to talk an awful lot about setup. We started off with the head position and we moved our way down onto our feet. So in the session, we talked about our head position. We really talked about getting, making sure the head is up. So that's really promoting more of a kind of body turn. We notice that if the head gets down, it will restrict our body turn from there. Make sure it's up so we've got plenty of room to get our shoulder underneath the chin and that will promote your 90 degree body turn there, which is essential. From there, we move down into the back position. We know what it tends to be the, the problems as far as the back position is concerned. We can get very hunched over. You know, the shoulders, you know, if you go down from the shoulders down to the bottom part of your back, you can get quite disjointed by getting it as straight as possible. We had our checkpoint there. If we were able to achieve it or as close as possible, being able to get the club really at the top of the head here and the bottom of the club should be able to just touch the top of your bum there. If you're able to achieve that, we've got a nice straight back or something close to it as well. As soon as we've got that straight back, then we can really get the body turning as one. If it's hunched over, shoulders and arms will be working against the hips. Moving on from there, we've got down into our hips and actual you know, knee position here and the importance of it. But we always wanted to make sure we get a nice wide position into the knees. This is going to offer a lot of stability into the swing and also just a little bit more kind of resistance into the thigh area here. And if you feel that, then fantastic, you're doing it correctly. On the way down onto our feet, we talked about our foot position. Typical scenario for our foot position, the feet can be slightly splayed apart. That can really allow us to, you know, a lot of body movement swaying through the ball. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that if you've been having coaching before. We wanted to make sure that our right foot position is at a 12 o'clock position. That will create a bit of resistance up through the knees here. That will stop us swaying away from it. And our left foot position is going to be set off at 11 o'clock position. So it's actually allowing us when we're coming through the ball that the front foot slightly splayed out, which eases us into our finished position and for us to maintain a more kind of stable, kind of upright facing where you want it to go position as well. Okay. Moving on from there, we talked about ball position and the relevance of your ball position. Hopefully you're all very clear on a six iron up to your pitching wedge, your ball position is central. And the easiest way of checking this is by having the pole down on the ground. You know, when you're getting yourself set up, you can quite clearly see, right, pole's right in the middle of my stance here, and you can practice away. And as soon as you start to get that feeling, you know for yourself it's black and white in front of you, you're in the correct position, it's going to be a lot easier for you to just kind of feel a lot more natural. And as you get up into the more kind of driver position, the pole's going to be more towards the left hand, you know, inside the left heel here. That will promote more of a sweep in the ball off the top of the tee. Again, it's something very important to be checking as well. I hope that kind of all made sense to you. Again, if you've got any questions, you can always email me at aroberts-jones at allcoursehotel.co.uk. Uh, tune in for our next sessions, and I look forward to seeing you there.